Global Forest Watch is an online forest monitoring and alert system that combines satellite data, cloud computing, and crowdsourced data to increase transparency about forests around the world. Um, the platform was launched in 2014, so actually it's quite a new initiative, uh, but we already have three breakout applications or apps uh, built off the main platform that cover fires, uh, climate, and commodities. Uh, and also we host over 100 data sets. And these data sets come from a network of over 80 partners that Global Forest Watch uh, pretty much is. You know, this initiative is a partnership. And so not only are our partners providing data, but they're using that data to run their own analyses about what's happening in forests around the world. Um, and also looking at the different ways that forests are affected by supply chains, for communities um, and so and governments as well. So, despite the fact that we have had some revolutionary periods in tracking in tracking forests with data like this and with satellites, we are still losing 50 soccer fields of forests every minute of every day, which has amounted to over 2.3 million square kilometers over the last 13 years, um, and so. What Global Forest Watch is really trying to do is address that information gap. Um, because all of these different partners have data about where a forest is being lost, who is using the forest, uh, and where the, the last pristine forest still remaining, uh, Global Forest Watch has tried to compile that all into one comprehensive site. Uh, and so many Many of the most biodiversity rich forests are located in remote areas and are difficult to monitor. Uh, sometimes by the time you were able to monitor a forest and actually publish a map or a report about it, the forest would already be gone. And so what we've tried to do is bring that forest monitoring into near real time and really empower the people and empower the public, empower all of you guys who are monitoring forests around the world to do the best possible. So now we're going to start uh, with an overview of the website. So this is our Global Forest Watch homepage. Um, as you'll see, we have a rotating carousel in the center. And this carousel features the latest research, stories, and features that we have on the website. If you're brand new to Global Forest Watch, our suggestions for getting started here will take you to some of the most uh, important places on the website and give you some tips for getting started. Um, across the top, these tabs will take you to the different Global Forest Watch applications, give you places that you can stay informed about what's happening on Global Forest Watch, give you some ideas for how to get involved with us. Uh, there's also a link to our tutorial materials and a place where you can learn more about uh, Global Forest Watch. If you scroll down, you'll see links to the different Global Forest Watch applications as well as links to our blog. And we also have a section where we show the latest discussion forum posts about uh, where users can ask questions about what's going on on Global Forest Watch and see what's happening on social media. In addition to that, we also have uh, user stories. Users can submit stories about what's happening in their own backyards and, and uh, share them directly on our website. And so, like Carla mentioned, we do have a lot of applications that branch out from the Global Forest Watch homepage. Uh, but right now, what we're going to focus on first is our interactive map. And there are two ways of getting there, or actually several. Uh, you can go from the main menu, you can go from the actual homepage button itself, or you can go from the menu up here as well. So what you're seeing here is our basic interactive map of the world and tree cover change. So we're going to go through a few different ways that you can use this map, what you're seeing on this map, and um, then afterwards go deep into a few examples of how you can really layer data um, using this map. So what you're seeing is sort of a basic Google map background, uh, but on top you can see on the legend here in this window, um, in blue is tree cover gain, and in pink is tree cover loss. 
And this is from the year 2000 to 2014. And so in some areas of the world, you're going to see like a lot of pink and it's going to be very clear that there's a lot of tree cover loss that has gone on in this area over those years. Uh, but in some areas of the world, you're going to see sort of a deep purple where that blue and pink have combined. And that's usually where there's a lot of loss and growth going on for a variety of different reasons. So over here on the bottom left is another bar where you can zoom in and out, where you can share your view of the map. Um, and this is either an embedded link or just a bit.ly link, a shortened link. Uh, and what you'll sh actually be sharing is the exact view of whatever data or location you have pulled up. Um, you can hide all your windows here if you want to take a clean screenshot, uh, or you can reload the map in case you want to just go back to the beginning and go back to the global view of just the tree cover loss and gain. You can also search areas with this little search bar here or click out of it at any time. Um, at the bottom here, you can actually change the date of whatever tree cover change data you're seeing. Um, so depending on if you have different alerts, which we'll go into in a minute, or if you want to look at maybe tree cover loss in a certain area from just 2012 onward, you can change this bar and the data will adjust itself. Or you can also press play and it'll play out. Um, however, we do want to note that the tree cover gain data is static. Uh, so that is accumulative and won't change if you press play. And then over here, you have some more in-depth analyses bars that Carla will go into in a minute. Uh, but also, if you want to give this basic overview another time or show someone else the map, you can click on the tour button down here, and it'll go through pretty much what we just said. Um, we also want to show you the data, which is really our bread and butter of this map. And so you can go through our data menus up here at the top of the map. And this is everything from how forests are changing. And we give you a variety of choices to measure that. Um, and some data works better in different locations. For instance, um, Forma is uh, on a smaller time scale. It's not every year like the data we were just showing. But it's also only in the tropics. Uh, and so it's more like an exclamation point of what to look at at a wider area. Um, you can also see where are the forests. So we have um, global tree cover. We have where intact forests, which are those pristine untouched forests. We have carbon stocks and mangroves. So you, you can really see like how that change is affecting the forests on the ground. We also have who is using the forests, and that's everything from mining to oil palm to dams. And these are data sets that can either be global or you can really dig deep and see if they apply to just one country or another. And these are also data sets that we're constantly accumulating. So say if you click on oil palm or wood fiber or dams, you might have been able to tell that oil, palm, and wood fiber weren't necessarily for the whole world. They show up in just a few countries, but dams is a global data set, and you can see the spots all over here. We also have conservation, so like where are the protected and most valuable forests in terms of biodiversity or heritage. And so our protected areas map shows you all the national parks for the world. And this is also ocean parks, but you can really zoom in and see where some of these areas are being protected by their national governments. And you can click on any of those areas and get more information about it. We also have biodiversity hotspots, tiger sites, bird sites. Uh, we have a lot of different options for protected areas. We also have who are the people living in the forest. So for a few countries, we have land rights, as in those communities who have legal land tenure as recognized by their government. Uh, and we also have stories. So we have two partners that focus on forest and environmental journalism and their sites or their stories can be seen on the site. And we have crowdsourced stories, which we'll go into a little bit more later. So I'm going to just take a second to address a couple of questions that we've had so far. Um, first, uh, what's going on in the areas that are white? So as you can see from the tree cover data set, um, most of the white areas don't actually have any forests. So the satellite 
uh, detection won't pick up any forest change because there's not actually any forest there. Um, another question is, is the information in real time? And our forest change data sets vary in how frequently they're updated. So the tree cover loss and gain data is updated once a year and it reflects annual information, but the alert systems are updated as often as every month or every two weeks. Um, and so these are measured at a lower resolution, but they point to areas where recent change has occurred. So that way it can be verified on the ground. So let me just go into an example here to make this a little clear, because this, this is actually one of the stickiest points that we get with our data. Um, and so what we have here, <coughs> excuse me. Here, one second. So what you're seeing here is our annual tree cover data. Like I said, this is taken with, um, with satellites. And so actually the way this works is that every year, uh, one of our partners at the University of Maryland goes in and looks at Landsat satellite imagery and sort of compares the tree cover from year to year. So if actually an area of 30 by 30 meters has disappeared from the map uh, in terms of tree cover, then they slap a pixel on it. And so what you're seeing here is an accumulation of those pixels. And that's 30 by 30 meter resolution. But that's on an annual scale. And so you can see year by year how it changes. And this is a site in Peru that we actually use as a good example of the ways that our um, different alerts work differently. So here I'm going to pull up Forma, which is more like every month or every quarter. Um, it's a actually 500 meter resolution, so it's a much wider area, but you're getting a more, um, more up-to-date and near real-time status. So you can still change around this bar as well and see how the alerts have popped up and when. Um, or you can use, for instance, in Latin America, we have a more specialized data set, which is Terra I. And this is a smaller resolution, <coughs> and it's actually quite frequent. It's just using different satellite sensors. And so what you're really doing is comparing uh, and verifying between data sets. But what you can also do is over here on the right, we have our base map section. And so this white area just because it's not picking up tree cover loss doesn't mean that there's not trees there. And so say I go to the roads, which is my personal favorite in terms of um, general satellite imagery because you can actually still see the town names and stuff. And you can see this area on the map has actually been deforested and it's been picked up by satellite imagery. So this tree cover loss, because it's at a smaller resolution, is actually more tightly fitted to the area that's actually lost. So you can see it almost matches perfectly on the map. And you can see, for instance, it all pops up in 2013. So we can really hone in on that. So um, in addition to these global data sets that we just uh, walked you through briefly, there's also country specific data sets. And many of these are shared by national or regional governments and NGOs. So they're tailored to the more specific issues that are affecting different regions. Um, so I'm gonna walk you through just one example in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Um, so you can see listed here on the right in this panel are all of the different local data sets available. So you can see primary forests, um, forest titles, or where forests have been assigned uh, to individuals or companies, um, as well as mining permits. So we have this, this type of local data for a set, subset of countries, and we're always adding to them. So if you don't see any data available for your country currently, you can uh, check back or you can contact us if you know of any of any data sets that are available uh, publicly. Now, if we zoom into this area in the Northern Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, just north of the uh, Congo River, you can see this, uh, there's a lot of tree cover loss happening here. And 
for those of you familiar with logging, you can, you'll recognize this very characteristic network of logging roads that's developed north and south of the Congo River. Um, I'm going to change the base map to a darker uh, image so that you can see that more clearly. And we can also look at this example with some of our other data sets. So if we turn on the forma alerts again, we see very similar the forma alerts also picked up on this forest change happening in this area. Um, and we can combine this now with different kinds of data sets available. So the intact forest landscapes data shows the last remaining untouched forests around the world. Uh, the darker green shows remaining intact forests, and these areas of lighter green show where there's been a reduction in the intact forests. So you can see that the logging roads are going right into these primary forests. So this is a good example of how combining the global data sets with local layers can reveal what's going on more specifically. And in addition, we have a layer on logging roads. So this data set comes from an initiative uh, through Global Forest Watch and Moabi, which is an NGO that works in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And they use crowdsourced data to map when uh, logging roads appear on satellite imagery. So here we can see the different dates that people have assigned to the logging roads and actually compare it with what's going on in the map. Now, one thing, one feature that really sets Global Forest Watch apart from uh, other GIS platforms that are easy to use is that there's the ability to uh, perform analyses on the fly. So if we want to see how much tree cover loss is happening for the Democratic Republic of Congo in this particular region, we just select what we want and click Analyze. And it'll tell us exactly how many hectares of forest were lost between 2001 and 2014. And this actually changes in real time if you select a different tree cover change data set. So it tells you there was over 5,000 forma alerts during the same period. Now, in addition to uh, on a national or subnational scale, it's also possible to simply draw a shape on the map. Uh, so if you're interested in a particular area that you want to analyze, you just draw a shape around it, click analyze, and the map will give you exactly how many hectares were lost in this region. This also adjusts based on time. So if you are interested in a subset of years, the analysis will reflect whatever you select on the time slider. Now, if you are monitoring this area, another feature of Global Forest Watch is that you can actually subscribe to receive alerts when one of the forest alert systems picks up a new tree cover loss alert. So you'll get an email um, if you sign up here. And one more feature that I'd like to point out um, is that Global Forest Watch also has a variety of satellite imagery base maps available. So the most basic Google map imagery is available here um, under the base map tab. We also have the Landsat satellite archives from 1999 through 2014. And our newest feature that we just released a couple of weeks ago is Earthcast satellite imagery. And this imagery comes from three different satellites. Um, and it actually allows you to select the different time that you want to, the time period that you want to see. So we can change the dates and actually get the satellite imagery updated to a specific time period. And you can click on any of these tiles to see when that uh, satellite image was acquired and which satellite it came from. So a few more things that I want to point out on the map as well. Um, I mean, as you can tell, there are so many different ways that you can go into the data on this map. Like I said, we have over 100 data sets here alone 
uh, from the country data to the global data up here. Um, and some of it is in near real time. Some of it is static in the form of polygons, uh, sort of like the concession data that we pulled up where you can say mining. You can look at these areas and, you know, they're not, they're not pixels. They're not tree cover loss. They're an actual big area that you can click on and get more information about. But if you do have any questions about the data that you're seeing, you'll notice that not only on the legend are there little green eyes for information, but they're also in the menus um, and as well for our base maps. And you can click on those little eyes at any time and an information window will pop up, uh, not only telling you how frequently the data is updated, but also where it comes from, how we define the parameters of that data. For instance, um, here. For instance, our tree cover loss data, like I said, is at 30 meters by 30 meters. It's annual, it's from 2001 to 2014, but then it also goes into like how this data was collected and if you have more in questions about it, you can go to the website from which it originates. Uh, and that's as that's the same goes for these polygon data, this like shape data that's a little more static. Uh, and another thing is, We've gone through a lot of our tree cover loss data, but another data set that we uh, look to quite a bit is our active fire data. Uh, and it shows you where fire alerts have been picked up by NASA around the world. And so you'll notice that these are more like pinpoints, if I'm to zoom in. Uh, and these areas that are really dark red aren't necessarily really big fires. They're just a greater cluster of fire points. Uh, and also what this is measuring, this likewise comes from uh, satellite pickup. And so what this is measuring is the confidence of a fire. So it doesn't actually give you the area of it, but it shows you a point, latitude and longitude, where it originates from its brightness and its confidence level, which is sort of like a rating of how likely that is to be a fire, since all of this is remotely sensed with satellites. And you can see those from the past 24 hours, the past 48 hours, the past 72, and the past week. So we're looking at some of the questions here, and we had a question about plantations. Because uh, what I did earlier was I zoomed in on this plantation in Peru, right? Uh, and what you're seeing here is data that comes from a satellite. It's not actually given any sort of indication of why it might have happened, right? It's just a what. What are we seeing from space? Uh, and what can we see on the map? And so sometimes you get a plantation like this one in Peru, which <clears throat> had quite a few stories come out about it because it was a cacao plantation that ended up encroaching on intact forest landscape, as you can see here, it's been degraded. And this pink part that has since gone into the dark green means it's going to be even more degraded. But it's, like I said, it's not actually giving causality or asser asserting any sort of difference between tree cover loss in the middle of the jungle and tree cover loss at a managed tree plantation where someone is actually managing the forests and replanting. And so if you do have questions about plantations, we're going to be coming out with um, a plantation specific data set in the next few weeks. Uh, so keep your eyes on that. Um, it actually should be pretty soon, so watch closely. Uh, and that will be for just a few countries, but we encourage you when looking at plantations to go deeper into the cause and not necessarily think that just because there is pink on the map, it's automatically uh, deforestation and it's automatically bad. Uh, we had another question about how frequently we update the data. And so the forest change data sets are updated automatically uh, based on the, the intervals that the, we receive new data in. And those are all, you can find all of the information about how frequently they're updated under these information icons. Um, the other data sets, like land use and conservation are updated depending on how frequently updates are available for each individual data set. So 
Um, sometimes it's a one-time data set, and so you have to look at the time stamp that that data was acquired in. But often we do receive updates. Uh, we recently had an update to our uh, oil palm concessions data set in the Republic of Congo. So it just depends on when our sources give us uh, updates to those data sets. Um, and so now we've shown you around the map a little bit, and I just want to point out another feature of Global Forest Watch, which is our country profiles and rankings. So this is another part of the website where you can see information about what's going on in forests around the world for just one particular country that you're interested in. So I'm going to go back to the Democratic Republic of Congo. And on this page, you can see the same tree cover data information that was displayed on the map, but it's in an infographic. Um, and this is uh, easily shareable, so you can embed this into a website or copy the link. Um, and it also can be adjusted by canopy density. So the canopy density is a measure of how much uh, tree cover the satellite picks up in order to mark something as a forest. Um, because different uh, countries actually have different definitions for what's considered a forest. So that just allows you to make adjustments based on the specific country that you're looking at. Um, in addition to this tree cover uh, data that we also showed you on the map, there's some additional contextual data that we provide here. So there's information about what type, how, what the percentages of types of forests are in this country some information about the economic value of that forest, um, as well as some climate data. We also have the conventions that this particular country has signed on to, and some links to their government websites and their forestry ministries. Now you can also adjust this data for a particular uh, region that you're looking at, and the top part of this will adjust to just this particular area. So it's another way of getting an analysis of what's going on in the forest um, in one particular region. On this website, you can also download our tree cover stats, and this will download an Excel spreadsheet of um, all of the tree cover data from the University of Maryland. So that's our main annual data set for all countries and regions around the world. And one more. Um, part of the website we'd like to show you is our country rankings. Um, now these are only based on the University of Maryland data set, but they do list all countries based on the greatest tree cover loss between 2001 and 2014. And they also show that same ranking based on tree cover gain. So you can get an idea of which countries have cycles of deforestation and replanting. Um, it shows the greatest overall tree cover. So you can see that the top five countries are approximately the same in terms of the greatest tree cover loss gain and tree cover. Now the rankings also organize tree cover loss by different climate domains. So you can see that the majority of tree cover ha loss happens is still happening in tropical areas around the world. So I'm going to now go into a few other breakout, we like to call them apps, for the Global Forest Watch website. Um, what you've seen so far is really like the aggregation of the most data possible, right, on the map and on the country pages, which are pretty powerful. Uh, but because there are so many different ways in which forests are affected around the world and so many different values to forests, uh, we have also developed these breakout apps or applications that focus on fires, commodities, climate as well. Uh, we also have a blog, which I'll go through, and our uh, data portal. So first, actually, let's start with the data portal. There have been a few questions about downloading data. <clears throat> and so all the data that you've seen on on the map and on the country pages is downloadable on our open data portal. Uh, so you can go in here and search by type or just search the data that you're looking for uh, and download it to your computer to play with it further. 
and let us know if ever you have any problems downloading that data and we'll gladly help connect you. Um, <clears throat> as for the fire data, we had a question about that as well. And the fire data is only visualized on the Global Forest Watch platform for up to 72 hours. But beyond that, because we pull it directly from the NASA fire data website, you can actually go to uh, NASA's website, which is in the information window for fires, um, and download anything else that you want to get in terms of time scale. Uh, we also have a blog where, you know, you've been looking at a lot of data on the map, but we also like to go into the data ourselves and try and figure out what is going on on the ground. And because Global Forest Watch is such a large partnership and network of people using this data, uh, we are also collecting those stories as well. So from user profiles to guest posts to um, people to whom we've given small grants, uh, the application period is open right now if that's something you're interested in, uh, to maps of the week, to also like telling you how you can use the data and a guide to some of the stuff you're seeing. Um, we do a really wide variety of storytelling on this blog, and if you're ever curious about what's happening in a certain country or what's been looked at with a specific data set, I highly encourage you to go searching around here. Um, we also have... Oops. We also have, like I mentioned earlier, crowdsourced stories, uh, and these you can not only visualize on the map, as I showed, but you can also see them written out here. Uh, and you can actually upload crowdsource stories yourself. It's really easy. And not only are you sharing stories about what's going on on the ground or what sort of projects you're working on in forests, um, but you'll be able to pull it up on the map. So if someone, uh, if someone is actually looking for more information about what's happening on the ground, they'll be able to link directly to your story. And that is just really easy. Just submit your story. Uh, and it gives you a quick form. I should also mention that uh, Global Forest Watch is mobile optimized. And so not only can you see all this data on the map and on country profiles on your phone, uh, but you can sip, submit the stories, excuse me, submit stories directly from your cell phone or smartphone. Um, so our other breakout applications include fires, which I'm just going to mention and not go too deeply into because these could merit their webinars entirely of their own and we will have follow-up webinars in the months uh, coming. Uh, but Global Forest Watch Fires was developed specifically to focus on the issue of land and forest fires in the ASEAN region, specifically Indonesia. Um, and here, let's let it load. And so not only are you seeing these same fire alerts, uh, but they are in a different platform that looks at um, different things from burn scars. We have satellite imagery that focuses on fires. Um, we also have wind directions so you can see where haze from the fires is being pushed because in Indonesia, these fires are actually in areas that contain usually peat soil and that peat soil when burned has a very negative effect on the environment in that it releases toxic smoke. Uh, and in the past few years, Indonesia has had a lot of media attention from around the world because of these fires that are choking pretty much the whole region. Um, we had um, one question about how, how many users Global Forest Watch has, and we have a, over 30,000 active users uh, a month and about 40,000 sessions per month. So. Um, we do work also individually with certain countries to try to encourage nonprofits and governments to use Global Forest Watch as a, um, a source. Um, and someone asked if it's possible to download the Global Forest Watch data and use it on other GIS software. Um, so the open data portal that we showed you does have all of our data sets available in a variety of formats, uh, shapefiles, KMLs, um, there's a whole variety, and so those can be used in ArcGIS or any other GIS platforms that you might have yourself. So another application that I'm going to touch on just really quickly in case anyone else is interested is our GFW Commodities platform. And this likewise is focused on a more particular issue um, of supply chains around the world and how commodities like pulp and paper, palm oil, 
soy and beef are affecting forests. And this is actually where we end up trying to put the this data in the hands of companies who need it most so that they can clearly and transparently track their supply chains. But basically what you're seeing here is a similar map with data that is more about um, suitability and where these uh, plantations are occurring. And if ever you have any questions about these breakout platforms like GFW Commodities, feel free to email us uh, and we'll definitely let you know when more webinars on these breakout platforms are coming up. Last but not least is Global Forest Watch Climate, uh, which is our newest application that just launched at the climate negotiations in Paris. And it focuses mostly on um, the ways in which deforestation contributes to carbon emissions around the world. Because as each tree is 50% carbon, when you cut those down and just leave them lying around, they end up producing a significant amount of emissions. So what you're seeing on this map, instead of tree cover loss, is actually tree biomass loss. Uh, and that biomass, if you zoom in, you can see like where there has been uh, just a little bit of biomass all the way up to very, very dense biomass. And you can do the same thing as on the Global Forest Watch map where you draw an area, and I'm gonna do it very small because I'm still zoomed out pretty far. And you can actually crunch the numbers to see how many emissions uh, resulted from that area and when. Also on Global Forest Watch Climate, I'll just point out very quickly, our country profiles, similar to the ones on Global Forest Watch, but like I said, they're more focused on um, emissions from deforestation. They give you a lot of options for different kinds of data that you can use, and some of it is self-reported. So for instance, this one might not have self-reported data, uh, but you can, also customize your own report, depending on what you're looking for, if you're really trying to go deep into emissions from deforestation. Last thing I'll show here is the Pantropical Overview, which just shows you which countries are the largest emitters from deforestation. So like Carla mentioned earlier, oftentimes those with the largest forests end up having the most tree cover loss and tree cover gain just because there's so much going on within a particular forested country. So Brazil is pretty high, although their change over time, which you can see here, uh, does decrease dramatically. Although as Brazil's emissions from deforestation decrease, everyone else seems to be increasing. So those are just a few examples of the ways that we've um, really tried to apply our forest data for specific situations and make it the most useful for those on the ground. Um, like we said, the blog is one of the best places for you to get news about what's going on, not only in the world, but also on the website. Um, and let's go real quick to see if there are any last questions. As we said, if we don't get to your specific question during this webinar, we are going to be posting the rest of the answers on the discussion forum, which you can find here under join the discussion. So um, there's one question about uploading data to the website. So currently that's not a feature that we support, but um, it's one that we're developing. So in the next couple of months, you'll be able to upload your own shape files to Global Forest Watch and use our analysis, analysis capabilities within that uh, data set. Um, and we're also developing a feature where you can actually store your data on the website um, and either make it available publicly for other people to see as well, or just for yourself to monitor specific areas uh, that you might be interested in. Um, at the same time, if you have any really great data sets, get in contact with us because uh, we'd love to post them on our website. So now that we've gone through most of the Global Forest Watch website, we just wanna say thank you very much for joining and also point you in a few directions of ways you can get involved. Um, not only is our discussion forum a great place to connect with other people in the community, but like Carla said, you can share data. We've talked about submitting a story. There are resources for developing your own application similar to Global Forest Watch and using the Global Forest Watch data and our API. Um, you can also provide, oops, 
You can also provide feedback, um, not only through the menu, but on this handy little feedback tab that has been following us around as we go through the website. Um, there is a newsletter. Uh, you will get two newsletters a month. That's about it. We really don't spam you, but it's one of the best ways for you to get up-to-date information about new data and news stories and analyses. And also social media. We're pretty active and we encourage you to take a look at it. Um, and as well, our partners, of course, who are the ones who are really keeping this whole movement going along with you, our lovely users. Um, we will be having webinars each month, so if you could not make it or if you want to encourage other people on your team or in your community to join the next webinar, it will be about the same time, the last week of the month. Um, and we'll be also altering the time zones so that we catch almost everyone we can around the world. If you are interested in a specific webinar for one of our breakout applications or for a specific use of our data, just let us know and we might be able to accommodate your needs. Uh, we also encourage you to watch the recorded webinar or share that once we make it available. Uh, because this is our first official webinar, we're also asking you to please fill out our webinar survey. It's just a few questions. It'll be very helpful for us in gathering information. Um, and that is bit.ly slash GFW webinar one. That's B I T dot L Y slash GFW webinar one. And we'll actually be sending you an email to all those who registered for the webinar with follow up information and resources, including this survey. But we really want to thank you all for joining. We hope this was incredibly helpful in your use of forest data and in helping us monitor forests all around the world with this movement of transparency and openness. We encourage you to get involved, to stay in touch, and we look forward to hearing all the amazing things that you're doing with the data soon.